السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. With the situation of Corona and having to stay home and masajid being closed, taraweeh being prayed at home, I thought I'll give a session on the prayer of taraweeh from different angles. Number one, let's talk about the ruling of Salatul Taraweeh. Salatul Taraweeh is a confirmed sunnah from the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the book of Al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed uh, in Ramadan, the first night, as narrated by Aisha. Uh, he prayed Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so people came and joined him uh, in the prayer. They, may, they formed a congregation. Uh, then he prayed the following day and the number of people increased. Then people came, the word spread that the Prophet ﷺ is leading the prayer at night. So people started gathering and the numbers increased. The third night he didn't come out. The fourth night he didn't come out. Then Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the, the, the following day of that last night, which he did not attend, uh, or uh, show up in the masjid. He said, I saw what you started doing. And the only thing that prevented me from coming up to the masjid, uh, the, the nights that I missed, was that I feared that it would become mandatory upon you to pray, meaning to pray taraweeh during Ramadan. What time should we pray taraweeh? Uh, according to the Sunnah, Salatul Taraweeh starts any time after Salatul Isha. Once you pray Salatul Isha and the Sunnah of Salatul Isha, from that time until Fajr, you can pray Taraweeh. Because the essence of Taraweeh is Qiyamul Layl. So you can pray it any time from after Salatul Isha and its Sunnah until uh, Salatul Fajr. How many rak'ah? How many rak'ahs should be? Uh, Salatul Taraweeh. Well, it's a long controversial issue. But the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha that describes how he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed Qiyamul Layl, which is reported by Al-Bukhari, goes like this. She radiallahu anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never prayed more in Ramadan or other times than 11 rak'ahs. He used to pray four, and don't ask about how beautiful they were, and how long they were. And then he would pray another four, and don't ask me how beautiful and long they were. And then he would pray three, as the witr. Now, is there a certain uh, amount of Qur'an that should be uh, recited during Salatul Taraweeh? No, there isn't. Uh, you want to pray a small surah or a long surah or part of a long surah. There is nothing that mandates any specific number of pages or verses in Salatul Taraweeh. However, uh, some of the scholars uh, said that it is recommended to recite the entire Qur'an during Taraweeh in Ramadan so that people, when they attend, would hear the entire Qur'an being recited. But it's not mandatory. Now, holding the Mus'haf to recite, is it allowed? Yes, it is. Sheikh Ibn Abbas said there is no, no harm in holding the Mus'haf because, he justified, he said, not everybody memorizes the Qur'an or memorizes a lot of the Qur'an or long surahs. Therefore, there is no harm when there is a need. There is no harm in holding the Mus'haf uh, to read from it. Uh, who, and this is important now that we are home, who is the one who is entitled to lead the prayer? First of all, it has to be a male, unless they're all females. I'm talking about families now. And the, in principle, the one who is the head of household, the head of the household, is the one who is uh, entitled, who has the right, and no one is allowed to lead the prayer or prayers without his consent. If 
he fulfills the bare minimum that makes the salah sound and valid, which is the ability of reciting Al-Fatiha properly. If he can't, then his son or one of his sons, or if he has another male relative staying with him, that, and that other person recites the Fatiha or can recite the Fatiha properly, then his right is waived and this other person is the one who leads the prayer. What is the virtue of Salatul Taraweeh? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, whoever prays Qiyamul Layl during Ramadan will have all his previous sins forgiven by Allah And this is one great virtue. Now, continuously praying Qiyam in Ramadan is a matter that makes a, a person deserving to a very lofty rank in Jannah. Uh, Amr ibn Murrah said that a man from the tribe of Qudaa came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, if I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that you are his messenger and I pray the five daily prayers and I fast Ramadan and pray Qiyam during it and I pay my zakah, where would I be? What would my rank be? He said, whoever dies after having been persistent, continuously doing this, part of which is Ramadan and Qiyam of Ramadan, will be amongst the rank of the martyrs and those who were firm on the truth. A final word I conclude. Don't make your main concern in Salatul Taraweeh, praying Salatul Taraweeh. What I mean is, don't choose قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ As great as they are as surahs, so you won't get me wrong, but don't just say, okay, let's just finish these eight rak'ahs with the witr and get it over with. It's not to get over with. It is there so that you purify and cleanse your heart and soul and be connected with Allah Azza wa Jal, perhaps that He would forgive us all. Allahumma amin. Assalamu